his cabinet just before the inauguration of the ministers in Abuja, President Tinubu effected some changes in the composition of the cabinet with the redeployment of Abubakar Momo from the Ministry of Youth to the Niger Delta Development. Also, Adegwega Oyetola is redeployed as Minister of Marine and Blue Economy, Umi Tunji Ojo as Minister of Interior, while Saidu Akali is redeployed as Transportation Minister. At the inauguration of the ministers, President Tinubu vowed to hold them accountable for standards he promised Nigerians. Let's hear from him. Minister of Federal Republic, you are not Minister of a region or Minister of a particular state. Since my inauguration on May 29, I have taken steps to begin implementing the agenda upon which I campaigned and for, for which I received the mandate of Nigerian people. With the inauguration of ministers today, we are about to accelerate our governing effort. Move to move forward, realizing our best aspiration for Nigeria. It's all about a great team, and I believe we have them here. It is high honor to be chosen to serve as a minister in the Federal Executive Council of our beloved Republic. With such high honor comes tremendous responsibility. In this moment of abundant promise and peril in equal measure, all of you who have been sworn in I've been called to distinguish yourself. It is me who know you. And delegate this also. But the greatest number of Nigerians are highly expectant of delivery and accountability and transparency. <clears throat> Nigeria expects that you will serve with integrity, dignity, and deliver. I will hold you to that standard. We both we all promise Nigerians. Your assignment began immediately. As your country honors you today, by this call to service, you must each work to make yourselves worthy in the eyes of God and all our nation's people. While most of the ministers have resumed duty with their ministries, with some already making public their vision, one of such is Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, Yusum Wiki, addressing newsmen in Abuja. Wiki vowed to deal with people distorting the master plan of the FCT. Let's hear from Wiki. <laughs> All those people who are distorting the master plan of Abuja, too bad, too bad. If you know you have built where you're not supposed to build, it will go down. It will go down. Be a minister of anywhere, be an ambassador. If you know you have developed where you're not supposed to develop, your house must go what? Down. 
those who have taken over the green areas to build, sorry, Calapax must come back. The green areas must uh, come back. If you hate green, you must hate yourself. So if you know you have anybody who is involved that have taken over the green areas, have taken over the parks, to where you now do restaurants, no, we will not accept that. Sorry. If your father has done that, sorry. <laughs> if your mother has done that, sorry. There's nothing I can do. It will go down. And all these people are doing land marketing. <laughs> I'm talking, I'll talk to the staff tomorrow. There are a lot of people are involved. <laughs> and let me tell you, that period of land marketing is what? Over. And those that government are giving CFO land, allocated land to them, they refuse to develop. And use that, they are becoming land speculators. <laughs> the land is gone. I'm going to revoke them. I will revoke them. Because I don't understand how your government will give you land to develop. Then you keep the land that time, land that you may have paid for 200,000. You are not going to find who will buy it for 2 billion and 3. Who does that? We we'll take back our land and give it to those who want to develop. I must sign that I must develop a social time. So, if you are part of those who have been getting soft land, it will come back to us. And some people are saying, oh, Abuja is not doing this, Abuja is not doing that. Those of you who also have refused to pay a grand rent, non-payment of grand rent is a breach of covenant. I don't need to write you to pay. You know this word as well. This is like a, a tenant. At the end of the month, you are supposed to pay social bank, for example, and then you say, oh, my landlord has done everything to me. No, it doesn't make sense. God, Abuja needs money too, is it not? But, Part of the revenue, a source of revenue, is grand uh, rent. So if you have not paid, be it uh, nationals, whatever you call it, banco, anywhere, anyway, big man, or, sorry, I'm, I'm not the tired to revoke that one here. It's, it is true. And I'm going to do it, nothing will happen. Heaven will not fall. But heaven will either be at peace. Julie, this is looking like no nonsense, Minister. Because if we fail to pay your grand rights, because Abuja needs more money. If we fail to pay your grand rent, I will come for you. We will take over green areas. Yes. We will take over green areas. <laughs> we will come for you. <laughs> uh, Ab Abuja. Never Ab a dull woman <laughs> some wicked. Never a dull woman. Abuja has found <laughs> in a long time. Abuja didn't have a minister mm. that you could describe as no nonsense. And uh, many of us who go to Abuja from time to time, so the decline. We, we, we cannot deny the deterioration mm. of the federal capital. Master plan, yeah. You know? The deterioration, <coughs> the way people are building houses where ordinarily they shouldn't have built houses. Even the extent of um, the manner of disposal of human and uh, industrial waste puts Abuja to shame. Now, Wiki has come to right the wrongs. He has clearly come to right the wrongs. What is Wiki has come to right the wrongs because we just can't leave Abuja to deteriorate. We 
can't leave Abuja to deteriorate. It's our capital, one of the most beautiful cities in Africa, and we have to keep it like that. So, I said yesterday that Wike is the first minister from southern Nigeria, first substantive Abuja minister, FCT minister. I think I have to make it clear that because I, I got some messages, I just said Adeogun was not a city minister. I just said Adeogun was special duties minister, given the mandate to oversee Abuja. The construction. So, Wike is the first Southerner to become the substantive minister of the Federal Capital Territory. That is the truth. That is history. And we want to see what um, uh, is going to do. We've had ministers of state, Akinjide, Babalola, the rest of them. People have to um, be clear about what I'm saying. I'm mm. not referring mm. to minister of state. Mm. Because some are sending messages to me that are about minister of state. A minister of state is not substantive minister of a, of a ministry. We all know that. We all know that. So that is the, when they are talking about city minister, mm. do they call Ramatu, who was minister of state the last time, do they call her the city minister? No. It's Bello. So I knew what I was talking about. Um, we expect that, not just Wiki, all of those ministers who have been given different roles to play. We expect that they will do their best. And I'm happy that the president has said, we, I'm going to hold you accountable. We will Measure your also put the president on his toes. Mm. We will remind him to hold of his promise to hold those ministers accountable. The president has to come up with key performance index for all of those ministers. We are not going to have a situation in which people are just kept in their ministries, whether they perform or they are not perform, they are just there. No. Colorless. No. Four years, eight that years. is not what, in these difficult times, we need ministers who are ready to work, ready to generate money for our country, ready to help move our economy forward, ready to contribute their quota to the development to the growth and development of our country, and with the president as the person chaperoning uh, them to give their best. So we as journalists are responsible to remind the president that on that day, when these people were inaugurated, you made a promise that you hold them accountable. Do not relax. Ensure that they give their best. So we wish them uh, good luck. We, we, we believe that there is a lot of no promise, yes, and a lot of work to do. We are coming from a background that um, the, the the record of the stewardship wasn't scrutinized at any given time. <coughs> you see some even coming back after four years and just spend eight years in the ministry, and those people now they've gone in oblivion. We can't even remember it, some of them. Mm. And you think as well, some people, this person was a minister, this person was a minister, you thought, man, without any impact Not that you can sure. hold for eight years. And the chief executive officer, that is the commander in chief, did not hold any of them. Uh, we said on this program <laughs> almost eight years ago to the day when people were talking about this, that uh, Buhari was bringing it into the system. Now, most of them would disappear into the system. Mm. Uh, we are still using the old circular mm. table there. And that's what really happened. Out of over 50 ministers, over two terms, they have already used. I'm sure that even journalists cannot name 10 of the cough. Mm. That's how bad. And those that were remembered were remembered for all the wrong reasons. Mm. Um, uh, so they, were, they were very notorious, if that word is allowed. Mm. Uh, we hope this will not happen this time. And I don't think so, because some of these people are already outspoken. Some of them are coming from the tradition of the progressives, and we expect them to also hold themselves responsible. Because I know a minister who, who came on TV and said a lot of people were disappointed. I was not giving uh, Ministry A 
But I promise them that in this ministry that I am, they will hear from me. That to me is a challenge. It's not wanting to just disappear into the system. Because this is also an outsider. Go out of your way to let us know the challenges that that sector is facing and what you are doing to solve this problem. Set, the president has set a timeline. Set your own performance index to judge yourself. So that young journalists will call you out in a year from today that what have you done? You can refer us back to what you said when you resumed. That is what you are going to do. And that's why I'm very happy about the quality of people, especially those in foreign, in the foreign affairs, and then the, the man I thought was going to handle transport. Okay. But who is not going to handle all okay. that transport? Jill, the, uh, the former minister of works, that's Babatunde uh, Raji Fashola, we saw his performance. He's one of those people that I can point to readily that's like the star boys of um, the Buari administration. And in terms of infrastructure, they tried, and the deficits the country is suffering from right now, this will leave Dave Omahi with a very, very big space that he must do something about the level of degeneration in, in that sector. Yes, I am. Um, given the size of our budget and how much we allocate to works, for example, there's very little that a minister can do. I believe that if Fashola had more money at his disposal, he could have even done better. Done. But um, you find that without the um, the Abacha loot, for example, that was repatriated to our country, without having to take money from the sovereign wealth fund. And the Sukuk. Yeah. And, and you used and, to and, cook. And cook. Yeah. Honestly, we wouldn't have uh, even been able to um, execute those key projects. And I'm talking about key projects, referring to the Niger, uh, Second Niger Bridge, the Abuja, Kaduna, Kano, mm -hmm. Dua Carriageway, which is the biggest of the projects. You know, the, um, the, the, lo the uh, local mm -hmm. Iweto uh, Bridge, which links the yeah. southeast mm -hmm. to. Um, to the north central of our country. So those big projects, and then the Lagos Banu Expressway, which they re inherited and then redesigned. Frankly, if they didn't have funds coming from those sources, uh, especially the Abacha Lutz, they would not have even been able to achieve that much. Because so we have to get if in a year, for example, you are allocating like 400 billion to, uh, works. to works and housing. What do you expect? It drop, it drop, it drop in the ocean. You know? And there is a lot of debts, contract debts, mm. that, that, are, that are even with unpaid. local and foreign. You know? I'm not talking of uh, local. Local yeah, contractors. Uh, local contractors that we are owing them. It's a lot of money. So how do you deal with such a situation? So the infrastructure decay will go on until we get creative about um, sourcing for funds, and until we get the private sector involved in uh, the execution of this kind of projects. Because for me, the way to go, at least talking about uh, gl uh, global best practices, is a collaboration <laughs> between yeah. the, um, the, the sovereign and the private sector. The private sector can take a project do what you call build, operate, and transfer. transfer. You know, they, they transfer to you after some years because you will never be able to find enough funds Fund. <coughs> to execute uh, all, all the, the projects that you desire. Yeah. But now, I want to believe that with the subsidy burden taken away, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the states mm. and the federal. Um, we have more funds to build infrastructure. So our budget and our budget, we won't have to say, oh, we want to take so-so-so loan. Uh, this this, num I mean, this 
quantum of loan to be able to execute our project. Mm. A good chunk of what we need um, to implement our budget, we'll be able to find the money. Because if in a month we can save like five, I mean about 900 and something, mm. a billion. Imagine what we can do in a year. Yes, in one month. You can imagine what we can save in a year. So the removal of subsidy has some blessings in a way. What we just uh, want to see is honesty and transparency in the use of the funds that we are able to save from uh, petrol subsidy removal. Mm. Ali Uyutola was um, in um, tra transport. transport. Yeah. For, so was moved to... You know, marine? Marine, yeah. And blue, and blue technology. Blue, yes. so blue economy. You have these key agencies under um, former Governor Utola. Yeah. And him being a kind of astute administrator, somebody that at any point in time can hold his own. So this is another strategic um, ministry that has been given to him. Yes. I, I thought he was going to make a fantastic transportation minister. Because some of the things he inherited as governor from the man he took, the, to, took it from, he continued. For example, the Bogan, the Bogan, Odi Omo, Ede, Oshobo Road, that links the express, links the Badafi Expressway to Oshobo, we got to a point that the former governor had to leave it. When he came in and uh, he did about 10 kilometers. And when we asked him, he said, all they can do is to make sure that things go around. Don't forget, also to Shogo, the road coming from Iwo, all the roads coming to the capital. So I know, I thought we were yes. going to make a fantastic you know, all of those system. Mm -hmm. But what he did was basically take on those that he know he can finish. And then work on it. So, but now that he's in, uh, in charge of uh, marine technology, marine and blue economy. economy, this is a new way of taking all the agencies that has to do with marine, Put them in one port and make sure that they are properly monitored. MP, the Everybody. So that to me will be a true test of his ability as an administrator. Because we have some of the best ports in the West African coastline. But people run away from us. Mm. If they can, they go to Lumen, which now is even busier. They go to Kotonu. Some people even go as far as have job ports and then come by road to bring goods because this is the market. But a lot of people do not get values. Because one thing I told people, there is a dry port in Ibadan that is lying waste. There's a dry port in Kaduna that's lying waste. There are dry ports everywhere. Which I the minister now to do is to ensure that people don't come and set up structures along the road simply because they want to take goods from the port. I saw back as 20 years ago, Saudi Arabia already sending you text message where your flight will be on your way to Haji. So why should people leave Sokoto, for example, and stay out of Giri for months, simply because they want to take stuff away from the port? The first job for the minister is to ensure that technology is applied in such a way that a man who has goods to clear on Monday can stay at home in Guzo or stay at home in Kano and simply come down when it's 48 hours to the time is to pick up and not waste days, even weeks, mm. hanging around some areas because unless we do that, our, our, our trade will not grow to the level that we expect. All right. We'll quickly take this breather. When we come back, we'll talk more. Please don't go away. Many things in life, making great music is a process. And a key part of that is the right data and the data that helps you understand what needs to be done and how to do it and what sound will connect with listeners. Bring it up, bring it up. Let's go Whatever aspect of life you're into, enjoy the journey. Nine Mobile's got you covered. Dial star 301 hash now. Nine Mobile. You're heading home from work in the busy traffic. Your car breaks down. Car horns blast. Your car is pushed aside. You call for help. Phone battery blinks and dies. You take a cab. Few miles, tire bursts. What a day. Frustrated, sweating, and tired. Nearing home, darkness envelops the street. Wow, 
Just one house is bubbling with life. Brilliant lights, loud music, smiling wife all welcome you. We alone have light. Yes, it's JRB Solar Energy Systems, my anniversary present to us. No matter how dark life is, the sun is going to shine on everything you do. JRB Solar Inverters, Batteries, Solar Panels, Solar Street Lights and more. Telephone 0906 752 Email sales at jrbsolar.com. JRB, the sun is going to shine on everything you do. Thank you for staying with us. Julie, Wale Edu is going to have his hand full. He's going to be coordinating the economy and he's going to be driving the finance ministry. And um, this is very, very strategic. And we need that sector to you know, turn around whatever fortune we might have inherited from the last administration. You know, Ashwajo is out to make money. And I want Nigerians to challenge me that I said so. This president is out to make money. Otherwise, the sum of these ministries were created is because he has seen the potential in creating them, the potential to, uh, to uh, come uh, up with revenue. Yeah. I, I, yesterday I was talking about what uh, Lisa Bakuba said about mm. the uh, 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 min Ministry of Marine and uh, Blue mm. Economy. He said for 40 years they had been pleading, pleading that this ministry should be created. Now it's been created. At a time when Ghana was turning itself, already turning itself, to the, to the shipping hub of our continent. Mm -hmm. And Togo here, yeah, turning itself to an aviation hub. Because... Uh, um, Emirates and the rest of them, they prefer to go to Togo than come to Nigeria. Yes, the Emirates, they've, they've left Nigeria. So there are issues okay. that we need to fix. And Agbakoba is saying that that ministry alone can give us revenue in excess of seven trillion. Seven trillion, that's a lot of money. So we have a frugal person there probably the most frugal governor of his generation, has mm. been given that ministry. Ashwaju did the last minute uh, tweaking. Uh, tweaking, and the man the earlier gave that ministry will now be the minister of the interior. interior. You know? So he made, he made and he, he brought back the Niger Data Ministry, you know, after a lot of um, complaints uh, and anger over his um, uh, the, the decision to, to scrap it. You know, the Senate actually recommended that the Niger uh, Data Development Commission it's should go it. back to the presidency. It was the resolution of the Senate. So I thought the president wanted to implement that resolution. Now, when they probed the Apabio, um, uh, uh, I mean, the, the committee that Apabio set up at that time, to run the affairs of uh, the ministry. So, in the end, we have um, tourism, for example, standing alone. Tourism has tremendous potential, potential. to make money for our country. And communications. The young man, uh, Boson, who is now in charge of uh, communication innovation, uh, and uh, what's the other? Digital, uh, digital economy. Bosu has to show his inventiveness. He has to show that he is, um, um, as a young person, that he has bright ideas, the kind of ideas that our country had needed for a long time. So I think that in the final analysis, and look at what we are trying to do with gas, causing gas, gas resources, to stand alone because of a tremendous potential that we have in that sector. I can guarantee you that even now, we are beginning to see an improvement in revenue. Right now, we are beginning to see an improvement in revenue. That improvement would 
cut across, given the approach of this president. All that he needs to do is to monitor those ministers very well, so that at no point will they derail. You can imagine, we have a country now that is like the, uh, fast becoming the, the entertainment uh, um, capital, of, capital our. of our continent. Look at Ghanaians. I was reading Ghana, they were saying, look, look at us. Uh, the Nigerians have taken over completely. So we have a situation in which we can actually take the creativity, the creative juice of our entertainers, we can take it to the next level with a ministry created for them now. How can government and the Davidos, the Zinoliskis, the hot kids the of maker, this world, the how can they work together for everyone's good? You know, if, of course, the movie industry too, uh, Nollywood had even been there before the Davidos, mm. uh, the Bonner Boys, before they uh, hit the scene. But what I'm saying is, how can government work with these guys and deliver solid results that will lead to more money for our country? Because you look at Volvo, for example, when you talk about Volvo, Sweden. Sweden, Volvo was bringing highest um, foreign, uh, foreign exchange into the country. Then ABBA came, ABBA the musical group that is now defunct. Mm -hmm. ABBA became the highest foreign exchange earner for Sweden. for Sweden. To the point that when the, those two couples, when they now quarreled, and the, the, last, uh, the second couple were the point of breakup, their prime minister tried Intervention. his best to make sure that the, the, the musical group does not break up so that Sweden will continue to earn good foreign exchange from the ABBA musical group, which dominated the 70s and the 80s. So that is the extent to which entertainment can actually fetch money for a, company, for a country. So it's forward thinking to create that ministry that takes care of um, the Davidos of this world and, and the that, rest of yeah, them. Now sense. we we have to see how government uh, and those guys can work together for the good of our country. So there are a lot of things that excite me, mm. but I'm cautiously optimistic. Mm. I want to see the first few months of uh, um, of the I mean the, of the cabinet. Let's see the signs, the positive signs that will come from a lot of these brilliant people that um, the government has brought in. They talk about some governors, oh, those governors, why did they bring them in? Some of those governors are even technocrats at heart. Yeah. The man with the funny beard from, uh, from uh, Jigawa, he never worked for anyone until he became governor. Industrialist, very successful businessman. He never worked in government until he became governor. So, you, so this and it's not everybody that is just a career politician. They can't function in everywhere else. You can't tell me that a Dave Omai, who has already shown that, potential. Uh, he showed his potential as a governor. You can't tell me that he can't do it. You can't tell me that uh, Wiki cannot do it. I'm Positive that we can will deliver. No, even by Adelabu. Yes, by Adelabu, Toro. Yes, okay. Again, a politician that you can't say is not a technocrat. He's very, very solid. Money. He's a technocrat. He's you know, we, we we saw him in Ibadan when yeah. we went for the uh, Ajimobi program. You know, on yeah. Azumi character, you not even know that he's a big man, and he he, he was in he excelled in the CBN. Nothing says that. The power ministry that he has not been given, that he has been given, that he cannot excel. Because but they need to be monitored. Mm. The president has to do his job mm. of keeping okay. everybody on his toes. Talking about this power ministry that Jude is talking, yeah. in my generation, in my lifetime, I would like this problem to be solved permanently. Yeah. Our prayer is that, that somebody will come and solve this power problem. For that, Tinubu tried in Lagos. Five years ago. Yes, to, with the uh, Aaron in place. Now, Mohamed Wari, with the um, deregulation of that sector, as signed by President um, Tinobu when he, when he got there, one of the first bills that he signed, 
to be able to say, let's solve our power problems right now. The only way to solve the power problem is what you said, the regulation of the power sector, not the Karikari one that they teach, not the sold of our assets. I think the new minister is going to function more for both power and money. That will come because he, I remember him saying that what he wanted to do was to bring in investors bring into in. the power sector in such a way that they will not become parasitic, like the president discourser. Because president discourse, for the use of a better word, cannot be said to be performed. So the new minister, I think, is working out a deal, usually for those who want to invest in the power sector. Started during the February, by the way, so it's not really new. Okay. It's to ensure that we have enough power generated in certain areas to continue the legacy that we already started. Together with those uh, non-power elements that have gone to the villages. I'm sure that people will be surprised at the level of work that will be done to bring in foreign investors to the power sector in the next six months. The new minister, I know, is totally committed to making that difference. Because he told his people that this is the best opportunity in Nigeria today for us to really industrialize. And the solarization only comes when the people bring in money to the power sector, assure that they will get a return on investment. All right. The honeymoon is over for the administration of President Bola Tinobu, and it's time for action. As such, troops of the four special forces command have been called upon to rise up to the renewed security challenges in Niger State. Major General Hilary Zhang who address officers and men of the command charge them to flush out bandits terrorizing the states from various forests which served as their hideouts. Yes, it's time to deal with decisive blow on these guys and halt their activities and their leaders, those ones that they have this larger than life names, should be apprehended and showed to Nigerians that yes. These are not these guys are these bandits are not bigger than the states. The states. Yes, um, and as I've said before, if the army is not sufficiently provoked by the killing of thirty-six um, officers and men, yes, then nothing else will provoke them. <coughs> guys slaughtered our soldiers, left some of them wounded. We sent um, what you can describe as an air ambulance to go and bring the dead as well as the injured. And uh, Dogo, Dogo Gide and his men stepped in and killed uh, those who had come to ferry the injured to safety. So at the end of the day, about 36 um, officers and men were killed. They killed commander, killed two IC, killed third in command. In a long time, we've not had such a setback. And the army knows now that they have to identify the hideouts of those guys and, and uh, deal with them. I saw a video earlier today of um, what I was told was the result of um, a gun duel between the army along the Tegina Zungeru Road and uh, bandits. Of course, the bandits were given a bloody nose and a lot of their weapons were confiscated. Uh, confiscated. And when you look at that video carefully, you see the flag of Boko Haram mm. on the ground. You know, that flag was created after Boko Haram pledged loyalty to the Islamic State, that black flag. And I saw that flag on the ground. As I've said before, Boko Haram already has established presence in no, the think. North Central. You know, um, even their faction which is called Ansaru. They are harassing people in uh, Rinengwari and some parts of Kaduna State. Now in Niger, Dogo Gide has been working with the remnants of Shekau's people for a couple of years. 
that's why you see that they are quite stronger and his men have some level of training. So but the army must not uh, be demoralized by what happened. When a soldier goes out, 50 /50. Uh, chances are that you will not return alive. So mm. they should encourage themselves and go out there and exterminate these guys. It's not going to be easy, mm. no doubt about it, because um, the area, uh, the, the sphere of influence of these guys is very large. You look at a state like um, Niger, where they are. The big one, states. one local government alone. Mm. It has the biggest local government in Nigeria, which is Bogu local Bogu. government. Mm. Uh, the Bogu local government is bigger than some states in the south. Mm. The whole state, oh. at least okay. I know it's bigger than the, than the Kitty state, for example. One yeah. local government. Mm. All right. Redemption appears to be coming for the Naira. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has announced a new operational mechanism for Birudi Chonch, or BDC, and introduced an importer's foreign exchange price verification system portal to curb speculative demand. Meanwhile, commercial banks and Birudi Chonch operators are engaged in discussions aimed at exchanging dollar liquidity and prevent further depreciation of the Naira. The collaboration involved banks selling proceeds of international money transfers from BDCs at the prevailing investors and exporters' window rates. GKB, take us through this. Well, two things, yeah, that we thought they would have done at least one month ago when the Naira was floated. And this started. We told them that knowing the Nigeria portions for abusing the system, that this will happen. And this is what really happened because a lot of speculators now moved into the markets to ensure that the price of the dollar remains high. Simply because they assume that they can keep it, they can sustain at that level to the detriment of our country and those of the productive sector. What this one will now do is to ensure that we can now verify those who make claims. Instead of simply giving money out as a, a basic travel allowances or to do certain things. This will slow down the number of dollars going out. But the good side of it is that now the thing will stabilize around a particular figure that people can now project with. Because right now, it will be suicidal for anybody to plan. <laughs> I know some people wanted to buy tickets and are not planning beyond it. The bank told them that they cannot guarantee the amount beyond five days. And it's not traveling for at least next two, three months. So this one will ensure that there will be a stability in the exchange rates up to a reasonable level. Because if this is not done, you will not be surprised that if we allow the free fall to continue, some speculators are already planning to make sure that the dollar to the next exchange rate reaches 1,500. Julie, I think we start, uh, we've started seeing the um, measures taken by the Central Bank of Nigeria, the fruit, mm -hmm. and um, as of last week, the it was halted because there was a time it was running to 950 naira <laughs> to a yeah, dollar. It was big at 958. It's, oh, man. In the, in the uh, private oh, yeah, market. Mean, yes. You know, the, the danger that we saw last, year, last week was the, the difference between the I and E window, uh, import and export window, and the parallel market was 206 naira. That in itself is extremely dangerous because mm -hmm. it then means that people can take money from, from the, the I and E window and take it straight to the, the market. Market, black market, which was what was happening the before. usual practice over the Because you, you take it at between 440 mm -hmm. to 460 um, in the official market during the um, uh, MFLA era, then go and sell at like 760. Fastest way to make your money. An encouragement for speculators to continue to be in business. Because uh, if you can get it, you bribe people and you can get it at the official uh, rate. Look at how much you are going to make. 
mm. almost 400, at least more than 300. So when this went to 206, the, the margin, it mm. be, at the alarm bells mm. began to ring. It was at that time that the acting CBN governor met uh, Mr. President and asked him to permit them to take some steps that in their view will help stabilize the, the, Naira. the Naira. Part of the steps was this money that came in from uh, the Afrasian Bank, $3 billion, yes. below, which is to which, uh, yes, you can call it a loan, but it's actually for crude oil. It's like crude oil bought in advance. Repeat. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's prepaid money for crude oil. So it's different from what we were doing before the crude oil swap and all that. And it's not uh, like a loan. I've had people say all sorts of things, you know, on social media. People won't bother to try to have clarity on issues, mm -hmm. but they have an opinion. Everyone has an opinion mm -hmm. on Experts. social and even yeah, on I things that they know next to nothing about. Mm -hmm. Just for them to be able to say, we told you, we told you they will go back to borrowing. That money is like paying, uh, paying you in advance for crude oil that you are going to supply. So, but you need, you need that money to show up, to inject into the, uh, uh, the foreign exchange market so that it can cause some stability to happen. Now, the, the fact that the thing is coming down gradually is because some people who had money, who had been keeping it and telling themselves that we will not sell until it's around 1,000. Mm -hmm. They are now borrowing themselves brain. So as mm -hmm. the, the, the street lingo, mm -hmm. they are borrowing themselves brain and they are now re uh, releasing this thing. Where do we get forex? It's mainly from crude oil sales and diaspora remittances. Instance. A lot of the money coming from diaspora, a lot of it is um, fueling speculation because somebody sends money to you now. He's telling you, wait, oh, don't wait until it's uh, this high before you sell. So there's a lot of speculation. But in my view, there is also a lot of dollars that people have stolen. All right. That we need to call, uh, take back. Okay, we quickly take another break. We'll be right back after this time out. In today's world, our lifestyle, both at work and at play, depends on connectivity. Our connectivity depends on the devices that make it possible, and these devices depend on electric power. When power fails, our life shrinks, our work drops, and our joy dips. JRB Solar Energy Systems are here to ensure that we enjoy uninterruptible power, uninterruptible joy. Whether you're running a business, an institution, or just a home, you return daily to rest. JRB has got you covered. No project is too big for our super digital inverters, long-lasting batteries, and efficient solar panels. Go. Dream on. Change your world. JRB Solar Inverters, Batteries, Solar Panels, Solar Street Lights, and more. Telephone 0906 752 Email sales at jrbsolar.com. With JRB, the sun's gonna shine on everything you do. Never. Thank you for staying with us. Did part of the... I wanted to make the point, and I hope our government will do this quickly. From the records of CBN, there are people who have been involved in round tripping. They've taken a huge chunk of dollars, running into billions of Naira. And they have not used, there's no evidence that they've used the money that they took for legitimate transactions. It is not difficult to find out who took what, how much, what did they use it for. Yeah. Government has to find a way to take back what these people have stolen, I mean, have taken, and give them back the value of that in Naira. You see, because it's so easy for people to access cheap Naira, mm. they, now what they have stolen, if you tell them, oh, I'm selling dollars to you at 5,000 Naira, 
to a dollar. Do you know that some people Dubai. who have cheap Naira that they have stolen, do you know that they are ready? Because it's not what they worked for. They are ready to exchange it at that rate. Mm. These are among the things driving this dollar illiquidity. People can't go and take uh, billions of dollars. Mm. And then we can't point to what they use it to. Sure. We must collect it from them. Mm. We collect it and put it back because we are talking about, okay, Nigeria has about 38 uh, billion in the foreign reserve. In actual fact, you don't have more than 15 billion. Mm. Because the other day, they let us know that JP Morgan, that we are owing JP Morgan about, uh, is it 7.3 uh, 7. Uh, 7. Uh, 7. or 7, I can't remember. Yeah. Now, it means that from that, in that foreign reserve, you cannot take all the money that is there. The one that was and there are some is. other people too <clears throat> who have outstanding. Uh, they have IOUs. Yes, that you have to pay back. Yeah. So when you are looking at the foreign reserve, in the real sense, you don't own all the money. And that limits the capacity to which you can even defend the Naira with your foreign reserves. I think that's what this one is meant to achieve mm. the foreign exchange price education system. No, those I'm some talking of, about the ones that have taken it. Some of these guys that have are, gone out of some the of system. These guys are in government. Of course, they are even in the bank. The, so the we have the political will to bring them down or expose them now. Mm. Is, no, if we do it, we are going to save a lot of. Uh, yeah, but of it depends on the president and those who. Is the political with. will has to be there? Yeah. You cannot look at all of them. I'm saying because some people are saying, ah, we are back to defending the naira. She what they just did now is not defending the naira with our money. Oh. You know, in the past, you take, we are subsidizing the market mm. using our hard and foreign exchange. exchange. But what they did this last time, contrary to what some people are saying, it's not actually defending the Naira in using our funds. We, we got them to give us money in and advance. we sold crude oil to them in, in advance. The, in the so that's a creative way of solving a problem and, and made, helping to maintain stability. But it's not like you're going to take money from a foreign reserve. And uh, pump into the system. And, and pump into the system as we were doing before. So people need to understand that. Because I hear people saying all kinds of things that they don't understand. But I, I want to believe that if we have like 15 billion outside, that from our foreign yeah, reserve, yeah. We, can, we have no choice, we have to pay. What do we do about those who took Nigerian uh, businessmen, rich men? They are hurting the country with illegitimate transactions that they are doing. And we know some of these people. You and I know them. So government has to, we are looking for dollars, and some people have taken dollars illegitimately. They can't, they can't defend what they took it for. It's round tripping. We have to take it back from them oh, sir, and give them the, uh, yeah. the Naira equivalent. Okay. Oh, sir, we have to leave it here. Yeah. I'll say happy Shashi Day. Yes. Southwest States. It's a shagwe wow. Everyone is free to practice uh, his religion yeah. the best way that he can. And the man upstairs is looking down yeah. on, uh, on everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, you know the Yoruba parable now? I don't know Okay. Yeah. All right. Boy, uh, uh, boy, uh, <laughs> that's the play means you say, where you get to heaven? Uh, uh, you know who is saying this? Okay. So between the between the religion. traditional uh, and the non-traditional. So you get to heaven, you'll know which one is the true religion. Don't show I'm there. All right, and that's our offering today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. You can watch the repeat broadcast tonight at 11 p.m. Join us this Sunday from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. for journalists hang out on Sunday on YouTube, youtube.com slash TV News Nigeria. I'm Ayodili Uzuba. Bye for now and see you tomorrow. Skills.